Good morning and welcome to the show and thanks for waking up with us today. This morning we're waking up with Bob Fowler from Marine Max. Marine Max, of course, is a quality premium boat dealership that we have right here on Thomas Drive in Panama City Beach at the uh, Treasure Island Marina. Bob Fowler, thank Don, you so much always uh, a for pleasure. coming on the show. Uh, I mean, there's always something going on out well, there. Well, there is. And you mentioned Besides about, cool boats. You mentioned yeah. about Marine Max. Uh, Marine Max is a great company. It's just a great yeah. company to work with and work for. Uh, it's the largest boat retailer and brokerage in the world. Wow. And we have 57 locations across the nation. So it's just a terrific from the head down. Mm -hmm. um, and you got uh, some fabulous just, boats Just there celebrated too. our 17th year as being a public uh, company. And it's the only boat retailer that he is. Really? So all right. uh, we're, we're really uh, thankful for that. Yeah, Great and you've company. got dealerships all over the place. We do. All over Florida. And, and mm -hmm. then, you know, talking about some of the things that we offer here, one of the things, as you know, we've talked about many times in the past, uh, 13 years ago when I came on board there at Treasure Island Marina. Came on board. I like that term. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Like, little pun. I know. Um, <laughs> and you've uh, been ahead of the wave ever since. Yeah. <laughs> I would hope so. <laughs> uh, started seminars, and uh, I was looking for the right one to partner with. And uh, everybody that I asked about said, man, you need to meet Tom Putnam. And so I, I scheduled an appointment, went out to meet Tom. Of course, he's the owner of all the half hitch tackle stores. Mm -hmm. Told him what I wanted to do. Told him, uh, yeah. you know, Tom, this is what I'm thinking about. What do you think about that? He said, count me in. Uh, I want to be a part of that. We haven't had anything like that going so he's on this part of, area. He's part of the Marine Max he Educational is, he is my, Program. He is my professional instructor for all of our fishing uh, seminars. And uh, Ron Barwick, who is his uh, assistant manager there, manager of all the service, uh, he comes with him many times and then he'll do some seminars so, as so well. So it's not just boating safety instruction that you can get there. And I've been to Marine Max where you guys have that classroom and that, you know, you got a Correct. great facility there. Yep. But you can also go there for fishing classes. And That's they're free. Cool. Wow. And um, I mean, Tom does and Ron, they do a great mm -hmm. job. And so the reason I bring that up is the 13th, we're going to have our next free fishing seminar, and that'll be on trolling for Wahoo Dolphin and Tuna. Wow. And uh, so it's always a great seminar. Uh, Tom comes Wahoo up. The, uh, Wahoo the fish and Wahoo. dolphin the fish, not the mammal. That's correct. Yeah, okay, yeah. That's correct. <laughs> yeah, just hey, anybody in fishing <laughs> knows the difference. Yes, they do. Um, <laughs> but uh, this is always a well-attended seminar. All our yeah. seminars are. Uh, in the last 13 years, up through December, we've had over 8,500 people attend our seminars. Wow. I haven't, I haven't added since December for this season, uh, but it has been terrific. And those who come will not only get a proliferate of information, uh, they can carry a printout that Tom prepares in full color that he teaches from, so they can make notes. Actually, I think I saw that at Marine Max the last time I was there. It was on that front desk. Yeah. It had yeah. pictures of fish, and it was a big oh, pamphlet yeah. like that. Like, yeah. Yeah. So many He talks about methodology, that. tackle, uh -huh. uh, you know, the waters. I mean, there's nobody in this area that knows more than Tom. He was raised on his dad's charter fishing boats, raised right here. Mm -hmm. uh, and he just does a great job. He has a very genteel way of teaching and instructing so that it's very plain, very simple. People can understand it. Yeah, He's just a people person. And you don't have to be a, like a professional fisherman to go to no. this. You could be a beginner even, couldn't you? Exactly. Mm -hmm. We've had novices that's never been out on a boat in the salt water and they've learned they've learned tremendous things. So that's June 13th. June the 13th. Marinax. We start at 9 o'clock. Mm -hmm. It goes until 11 and it is free. That's now they can go right. to our website and go to events uh, and register for it. We would like to know so we can prepare and have enough chairs right. and things set up for people to come. And that's just marinemax.com. That's correct. And, uh, you, and can you go find to Panama little, City, yep. go to the Panama City store, go to yep. events, and you'll see it and you register right there. You know, I, I got to tell you, uh, uh, when you think boat dealership, you think of selling boats, but you know, the more I learn about Marine Max out there on Thomas Drive, it's more of a community resource for people who like to fish, boat, you name it. You've got all kinds of classes well, there. Well, that's exactly our point, and, and if that's you don't what know, we want to be. How do you find out? The, right, we want to be a destination for all yeah. the above. Uh, and I started uh, wild classes, women on water classes, mm -hmm. uh, that's hands-on on the water and also classrooms. So there's a lot of things that we do that we want to involve the community and get them enjoying the waters of our beautiful area and especially get a boat for Marine Max. <laughs> yeah. Oh, by the way, they sell boats too. <laughs> Bob Fowler, thank you so Thanks, much Don. for coming on the Always show. Always good to see you. <laughs> All right. And we'll be right back after you're waking up with Don Weather. Welcome back to the show. I'm here with Alan Graham from Counts Real Estate, and we're going to talk about 
first time home ownership. Welcome back to the show. Good hey, to see you Don. again, my friend. Good to see you. I know you're back from vacation too, which is yeah, awesome. Yeah, we had yeah. a little trip to Ireland and it was absolutely beautiful, And uh, but I'm ready to get back to helping people buy homes now. Yeah, now we, we were talking about uh, uh, first time home ownership. What are some of the things that you would recommend to say a young couple who might be buying their first home? It's really funny. Uh, I, I get a lot of young couples and they ask me to show them uh, homes that are the, that are in the uh, 2,000, 2,500 square foot range and they were built in the 70s. And I, I got to thinking, boy, these homes look real familiar to me. And it was what I built when I first started. And uh, what I see these young couples doing is they have an emotional attachment to what they were raised in and they're trying to hunt for something in that area mm -hmm. that makes this familiar to them. A uh, big great room and they've got all the intentions of having large family gatherings and uh, the Sunday school class over and things like that. But and, and sometimes does that not make sense for a young couple? Does well, uh, yeah, it does. But uh, what I suggest that they do is write down what they're going to need uh, in their home uh, uh, living space for the next three to five years. Let's mm -hmm. take a look at what do you need, not what do you want, or what are you emotionally attached to. It would be like somebody that uh, takes their uh, youth group to snow ski once a year and they buy a big suburban uh, car mm -hmm. and they take the youth group up there once a year, but they drive that suburban all year long and they have to pay for the gas and they've right. got the car payment and all the other expenses. People buy these large homes like that and they don't uh, understand that they have to grow into them and they get what we call house poor. Yeah. Uh, and so you so, want really like, like an age appropriate home, I, I suppose, really for a stage I, in your I, life? Yeah, really what I like for them to do is write down what they actually need. And most people need kitchens, bathrooms, and a, and a couple of bedrooms. Right. They don't need a lot of square footage and they typically want to buy in a neighborhood that's going up. So. Uh, in the uh, example of that 2,500 square foot house, I could get them a smaller house, let's say 1,200 square feet that would be a lot newer, but it just doesn't sound as large. And mm -hmm. they're stuck on, well, I need to impress these people, or I'm going to grow into it, or there's so many reasons that I've heard of why they're buying this large home. It's what I was raised in, or I'm going to invite people over. Uh, even if you invite people over, uh, if you only did it once a month, that's 12 times a year. So you're buying a large home to accommodate 12 days out of the year. Yeah, it doesn't really make a lot of sense. And so what I hear you saying, a, a lot of times, it's really an emotional buy and they're really not thinking through, you know, what they really need and what makes financial sense for them. Exactly, and that's part of my responsibility as an agent is to, uh, is to help coach them in that and point out the long-term expenses that are associated with it. I know we talked a little before we got started, and Karen and I, you know, our first home was a duplex. And I think we have like 900 square feet on our side, and we mm -hmm. had a rental on the other side. Mm -hmm. and we were both working. We got to save a lot of money to buy a house that we really wanted later on. Right, because mm -hmm. your power bill's not as high. You've got mm -hmm. a smaller space there. Your insurance is not as much. You have a smaller space your yard smaller and so you've got less landscaping to take care of and so yeah. all of those issues are downsized in your monthly house payment if you'll go ahead and make the right selection and typically you're only going to stay in that first home three to five years. <laughs> That's about how long we were there. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. And, and we had a tenant, not that being a landlord is a lot of fun sometimes, mm -hmm. but uh, you know, if you're a handy guy, I, I mean, you, you can keep up with both sides of that. And it helps you pay your mortgage as well. So the way we looked at it was like all of our mortgage payment went to principal. Right. And our tenant paid all the interest. So mm -hmm. it was a win-win for us, at least at that time. And it gives you couple. an opportunity to put some sweat equity into the house. Mm -hmm. Instead of hiring somebody to paint the house, a smaller house you'll tackle with a paint job for yourself. And so instead of paying the full price of a contractor, uh, you're able to invest some of that money back into the property that you do. So in the 30 <laughs> seconds we have left, um, is there a checklist or something uh, that you would give uh, young homeowners or you would just talk them through it? Uh, I would suggest that they write down what their needs are, mm -hmm. uh, not what their wants are. That, that want list is going to be real big and the real mm -hmm. need list is living space, low monthly payment, low energy bill to save for the family that they're going to start. Also, it allows you to build up equity in that house if you'll go ahead and pay a large portion of it off up front. Whereas if you buy a larger home and put the minimum down payment down, you don't walk into a home with equity in it. Equity is the, the fact that you could sell it for uh, and, and get some money out of it if you had to or you could refinance it if you had to. Well, wise advice, Alan Graham. And when in doubt, give you a call at Counts Real Estate. Thank you so much, my friend. Thanks, Good Don. to see you again. Uh -huh. Welcome back. And we'll be right back.
Welcome back to the show. I'm here with Allison Smith from Herbifex, Landscape Management and Pest Control. Yeah, good morning. Why did I stumble over that? I don't I, know. I've only know. said it a hundred times oh. now. You know? yeah. Allison, welcome back. So Thank it's you. So good to see you again, my yeah. friend. How are you? Uh, I'm doing well. How about you? I'm good. I'm good. You've got some beautiful plants here yet again. Yet again. On the Don Show, you always brighten things up. Yeah, well. well so cool. what are these about? What, they're beautiful. I particularly like that one. Isn't that cute? Yeah. Uh, this is called Hypo SDs, or the polka dot plant. It's a polka dot plant. It comes plant. in pink, white, or a reddish color. Um, and these are actually shade plants. We have you know, shade. Like, in other words, they grow in a shade. More mm -hmm. established homes, like the cove area. You have these big oak trees and mm -hmm. filtered shade underneath there. That's hard to get things to grow. You still want color. Mm -hmm. These are three ideas you could use. They're low maintenance. I love low maintenance. Um, yes, we all do. And they'll give you some color, and they'll last even under the shade of like a, a thick tree, so to speak. You can put it in a pot. You can do it in a little bed. Like a little, maybe a rock wall or something, mm -hmm. a little stack wall, and get you some good color. This actually will grow and spread. You can see and, it's and even actually spreading. what is this thing called? Spreading. This is actually variegated mondo grass. Variegated mondo grass. Mondo I just like that. I'll get it just for the name alone. The mondo yeah. grass. Hardy, hardy, hardy. You can tell it already yeah. has these little babies poking up. It yeah. Is, it's going to run. It's going to actually fit in and make a solid bed if you let it. Um, it's cute between, say, between pavers. Oh. Um, if you have an area between like a paver and a border and you want to just put something kind of that mm -hmm. can't kind of keep it confined, yep. great. You can actually mow this. You can mow it down shorter and keep it tight. Oh my. Um, again, very hardy and this is going to be easy, shade. easy, easy. This can take part sun, part shade. Okay. But it, again, this is an idea for you if you have filtered sunlight, mm -hmm. maybe your yard gets morning sun or afternoon sun, not a lot of sun all day long. Great idea for you. Yeah, you know, my house has a southern exposure, mm -hmm. as you well know. You've mm -hmm. been there, and it, you know, so we get a lot of sun on the front, but in the back, not so much. Yeah, well, this would be great. Yeah. And this is cute to do in like a container because mm -hmm. you can put flour with it, and it's kind of a cute contrast. Yeah, so you don't have to stick it in the ground. You just put it in no, the pot cute. and it'll yeah, you know, run wild. Yeah. Variegated cute. Mondo plant. Yes. I'll never forget that name. It's fun. It's fun. It's and just this fun to say. comes in solid <laughs> green um, or the variegated. Uh -huh. And there's actually um, a, a called a black Mondo. It's kind of a dark, dark green color. So black Mondo. It's hard to find, but it's mm -hmm. a good contrast again for plants. Interesting. This pink polka dot thing is very nice. And this cute polka, hypo -esties, which I think that's kind of fun to say. hypo um, Polka dot plant. Um, again, great in a container, in a pot. I actually have had a couple of these in a pot on my back porch for three years now. Oh my. In the winter, freeze back to nothing, you think they're dead, and then boom, they come right back up. I, I have a quick question for you. Uh, when you pot these plants, mm -hmm. I, I know drainage is important. Yes. Do you ever put like gravel or anything at the bottom? or Or so you, you just know, put a pot with holes, will that do? Well, you always want to make sure you have a hole at the bottom. Mm -hmm. And if you do not, if you buy some of the glazed pottery you buy may not have a hole. Mm -hmm. You actually can use a like a, a drill bit for tile or for yep, glass. Yeah, a masonry drill bit. With mm -hmm. water on it and you can very carefully. You should always you can, have a hole in the bottom. Yes, always have a hole. Rock does definitely help with drainage. Mm -hmm. um, I actually have broken some terracotta. We all have terracotta pots. We might break. Break it up finer and use that oh, in yeah. your bottom of your pot. Um, Yes, drainage is a must for this area. Okay, yes. gotcha, because I've actually rotted some roots. Oh yeah, you, it's without, easy to do. Yeah. You know, you get, especially like say, mm -hmm. um, parts of the county, parts of the area, you get rain. Yep. This time of year, you're getting rain every single afternoon. No. You don't have a drain hole in your container, or you're just gonna float your, okay. your things out. Now um, this little guy here, in the in the 30 seconds or so that we have left, what's the story with this guy? He's a coleus, and he, doesn't, he will actually mm -hmm. get a flower. You don't want him to, pinch it mm -hmm. off. This is a trailing version. So this is going to be just leaves, again, great in a container. It will hang off the side or oh. on the ground. It's going to really spread out, and that's what it does. It's just a cute. There's I see it's looking. It's wanting to get out of that to pot hang already. Yeah. yeah. So he's a. There's many varieties of this. Big leaves, little leaves. Some that get tall, coldiest, extremely easy to deal with. Just simply keep it pinched back. All beautiful plants. And if we have any questions about these, what do we do? You go to our Facebook page, mm -hmm. or you can go to our website, or you can always call the office, 230-1200. Allison Smith from Herbifex Landscape and Pest Control, thanks so much for coming on the show and showing us these beautiful shade plants. See you. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the show. I'm here with Stephen Longo. Stephen, I'm sorry, <laughs> Stephen okay. Longo, uh, who is a life coach 
and he works at a capstone house and welcome back thank oh, you very oh, much always fun to see you we always have a few laughs and yes it's like you are a life coach yes put me I in am. coach i'm ready for life <laughs> more or less <laughs> yeah how did you get started in this whole life coaching vocation well yeah uh, back in 2008 i had a uh, liver transplant oh my um, I never drank, I never did drugs, and I never had hep C. I'm just the lucky uh, one, of those one lucky tenth, few. Of, yeah, one tenth of one percent that uh, got cirrhosis without doing anything to get it. Isn't that odd? It's wow. very odd, very odd. But the whole idea around my liver transplant was miraculous, absolutely miraculous. So that was kind of a life-changing experience, I oh, guess. Oh, without a doubt, mm -hmm. because then after my recuperation or during my recuperation, I came up with new way of treating first the addicts, as we talked about mm -hmm. last time, and now everybody in general, because everybody can use something positive in their life. So let me understand your journey just a little bit. You, you, you were diagnosed with cirrhosis, which came as a shock to you because right. you weren't an alcoholic, you had no I was misdiagnosed for three years. Oh my. Because the first question mm -hmm. they always ask me, do you drink? Yeah. And I said, no. Wow. So, so they put that to the back until mm -hmm. my liver was shot. So you had to get a liver transplant. I had to get a liver now, transplant. Now, once getting that liver transplant, you were probably around other people who had liver transplants, I suppose? Or well, did you get to let me, meet let me tell you about this. I mean, how did you get into <clears throat> that whole attic okay. counseling? What happened is when I first was diagnosed, I didn't have any insurance. Oh, my. So there's no way you're going to get a liver transplant without insurance. Mm -hmm. But miracle number one, my wife worked for AT&T, and AT&T would cover me. So they did. Awesome. Went to Shantz Hospital, had all the tests, was uh, uh, ready to go on the liver transplant list. They called me back on a Friday. They said, we can't put you on the list because we, have, we need another blood sample. So I went on Monday, give them a, another blood sample, they put me on the liver transplant list on Monday at about 11 a.m. Mm -hmm. Tuesday, 11.30 at night, I get a call from Shands Hospital to have a liver. Wow. So, you know, we have to run off to a break right now. But on the other side of the break, I want to pick up where we left off. Okay. You, let, let's fast forward through your liver transplant okay. and then get to the counseling stuff. Okay. And how you, you, you had this, I guess, epiphany or... or, or I know, some sort of progression in your life that made you well, want to do A spiritual do this. awakening. A spiritual awakening. All right. Well, very good. Stay tuned for Stefan Longo, Life Coach's Spiritual Awakening, after these messages. Welcome back to the show. I'm speaking with a very interesting guy by the name of Stefan Longo, Life Coach. And right before the break, we were talking about how you had this liver transplant that right. saved your life. Yes, it did. And, and, and I guess there were a sequence of events that led up to a spiritual awakening. Well, it was like when I was sitting and I was recuperating and I saw the possibilities that I hadn't seen before. Uh, you really start to reassess your life oh, when you, once you, you have de a, definitely a, do. a major surgery yeah. like that. I mean, you know, uh, three months before, they were telling my wife, call, call my peer, uh, kin because I wasn't gonna make it through the night. Oh my, and so, here you are, yeah. new liver, new lease on life, so what happened, Ste uh, Stefan? What, what? Well, how, how did you know you had this awakening or reawakening? Things just started coming to me. Things about how people can be helped, how you have to love yourself. Number one, you have to love yourself. Now, did you put a lot of study into that as well? I put a lot of study into it because of the vibration. Mm -hmm. You know, when you say, I love myself, mm -hmm. you feel good. You feel good. Sure. But when you sing to yourself, I love myself, it brings it out to the whole world. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what I do. So, you know, before we started, you talked about the difference between affirmation and affirmation. Right. Now, affirmation to me means you, you affirm yourself, right? Right. What does affirmation mean? Affirmation is turning your affirmation into a question. <clears throat> You stand before a mirror. You look at yourself in that mirror and you say, I am rich. What happens? Yeah, I think, well, I'm a liar because I'm not rich. Right, right. <laughs> but if I say, 
Why am I rich? What does that set off? Then in I your start mind? thinking about family, friends, relationships, children. And you, you see know. just how rich yeah. you are. And that richness can go on to other things. So you bring that counseling, I suppose, or coaching to people in their daily lives. Just yes. to kind of yeah. you're more of like a happiness coach, it sounds well, like. Well, that's why yeah. I want to be, yeah. And the whole idea of the affirmations was uh, Noah St. John, and he's used this for many, many people mm -hmm. and had great success with it. And of course, he wants us, you know, to pass it on. And that, that's what I'm doing. So you bring it down. If somebody sees this and they want to get in touch with you, Stefan, and somebody needs a life coach, perhaps, how, right. do, how do we get in touch with you? Call me, 265 4785. Mm -hmm. Or at my uh, uh, email is Stefan, N M L, at yahoo.com. Stefan Longo, Life Coach. Thank you so much for coming on the show and sharing your story, your very personal story with us. I You're think people welcome. get some inspiration from that. Okay, You're welcome back anytime, my friend. Thank you. And we'll see you next time.